in five, four, three, two, and one. And welcome everyone to this episode of the Relators Podcast. All right, good people. Thanks for hanging on to this episode of the Real Leaders Podcast. Cool thing about Crowdcast is you get to be a part of the conversation. Saw a few questions flying in here. Um, and the first one uh, is this, Seth. It's, is ETC the change em- employee-owned? Uh, yes, we have employee-owned stock. It's not entirely employee-owned. We also have other shareholders. But every employee has stock in the company, for sure. Uh, are you interested in ESOPs at all? That can, tends to be a new trend that's coming up. My challenge with them is how do I create an exit for our investors? You know, we did raise money from investors. And so I've just got to make sure I can deliver on that. Mm. So I'm not opposed to it. Uh, but uh, like I say, it, in every company I've been with, the employees have had meaningful equity stakes in what we're doing so that whatever the outcome they benefited and, and both with honesty and beyond me, um, people had a really nice outcome. Seth, this one comes in from Jonathan and he asks, Seth, how do you see regenerative agriculture moving into the forefront, improving yeah. climate and supporting biodiversity? It's critical. And I'm a huge supporter and believer in regenerative agriculture. The one frustration I have is that the principles of organic agriculture, I believe, really are the same as regenerative. And so I don't think there's a need to create a third standard. I would rather see us really invest and support organic. And if we can do that and make that something people look for, which obviously we're trying to do with Eat the Change and we did with Honest C as well. I hope that will be part of it, but you can't leave it out. And so I've had conversations with some of the folks focused on hydroponics uh, and some other forms of agriculture. And I say, but what about the soil? You know, there's, we need to be investing in soil. And so sustainable agriculture, as well, of course, as avoiding, you know, clear cutting forests and other things are, going to be an important part of that definitely and doesn't the soil have a great effect on carbon sequestering as well yeah totally and if you can either have keep forests or uh, adopt no-till farming and other organic farming methods you have a much better shot of protecting it Hmm, interesting another one comes in from madeline and she asks what was the turning point for you to go plant-based it's a fun one. So we started as vegetarians 15 years ago now. My oldest son was having his bar mitzvah, and he had already been vegetarian uh, for three years. He had already convinced his brothers to be vegetarian. But as part of his bar mitzvah, he presented a Torah interpretation, which was all about the kosher preparation of animals which involves spilling out the blood and they say you shouldn't drink the blood because the blood is the life and you shouldn't eat the life he says if we're concerned with not eating the life let's not kill the animal and if we can meet our dietary needs without having to kill animals why wouldn't we try to do that Hmm. so we started as a family to be vegetarian then and we're happy with the decision from a ethical perspective but frequently disappointed when it was burger night or or other (laughs) occasions and so we were always looking for that, something that could help bridge that. Of course, that's what Beyond Meat did. And we became vegan just about a year ago um, when we, after seeing the Game Changers, and my middle son said, I'm going to do this. And we said, we'll try it. And actually, it's been a really positive impact on our family to the dynamic. It's made us much more thoughtful and mindful about our food. And particularly in a year where this pandemic, which is based on a zoonotic disease, made it feel like we are um, thinking about our food choices in a more comprehensive way and and mindful way. Interesting. It is a zoonotic disease. That is interesting. I never thought about that in terms of uh, veganism as well. Now, do you have to supplement your diet at all? Do you have to take uh, pills or anything like that? I take a, what do you call it? Just a a centrum, you know, a, a vitamin which I'm told you should be taking anyway. 
Mm. Um, so I, I think I'd be taking that if I were a vegetarian or not, just because you need to make sure you're getting all the nutrients. Um, but I actually feel better than I felt than I have. And, and it's neat to see my, I do a lot of swimming. Uh, my swim times now have been faster than they've ever been. And my biking summer was better than it had ever been as well. So it's good to feel like even as you're getting older, you're not necessarily declining. Interesting. Yeah, that was a, a big part of that movie, The Game Changers, is like, you know, athletes can't compete with each other yeah. on, on, you know, non or yeah, non meat or just plant based diets. Much better recovery too, quicker oh, okay. and just less soreness. Mm. Uh, this one comes in from Julie, and she asks, excellent perspectives. Question, mm -hmm. as a leader in this space, how do you think ahead to adjust to competitive and innovative challenges? Well, the best way to do that is to keep innovating um, without even thinking about the competition. You know, one of the things I said at both Beyond Meat and with Eat the Change is, you know, you, you steer by the stars, not by the other ships, right? You have to think about where you want to go. And don't worry about what people are doing around you. So we should challenge ourselves to keep improving our product, uh, improving our packaging, improving everything all the time. Um, sometimes there's competitors out there that have a little different approach and it's worth questioning what you're doing. And ideally your answers hold up and ideally the consumer agrees, but we never try to respond to, cons to, to competition as much as, anticipate where we hope consumers can go well seth it's been a pleasure having you on the show that was the last fan question hey thanks everyone for hanging on to this interview with seth goldman now seth any last words you have for where people can find more information about eat the change thank you yeah so eat the is the site for the business and we actually do take orders there we also have eat the change.org where we give information about the wonderful change makers we're funding around the country that are helping promote planet friendly diets in communities that often lack access to them. So look, this is a movement. We have a brand, but we want everybody to eat the change. We want everybody to take steps and we're having a fun promotion coming up in April where we want to empower people to take those steps as well. So keep an eye out for that. And real quick, as Will said, this just rolled out to stores. Where can I find a bag of this jerky? Yes, it's just launching in stores. So here in the mid-Atlantic, it's going to be in Whole Foods and Moms and okay. the selected giant stores. And out west, uh, we're launching an Air One next month, uh, as well as PCC and Huckleberries. So a lot of the West Coast. And wherever you don't see it, ask for it. Exactly. I will definitely get it down to San Diego. Seth, appreciate your time coming on the Real Ears Podcast. Folks, this episode, be a part of the movement. Listen to this episode again. Share with people. Uh, follow us uh, on the Crowdcast or on our all of our channels where this episode will be released on this coming Wednesday. Um, that's it for me. Seth, thanks for joining us. Thanks, and Kevin. Always keep it real.